Yoshian Cast, the weekly sports anime fan podcast. My name is Matt, and joining me today is a very special guest, Matt. Well, that's me. Hey, welcome on, Matt. Uh, so today we are reviewing All Out, the surprisingly not hit sports anime of last season or the past two seasons. Right. So, uh, we had kind of an interesting uh, history with this series. Uh, we were both really looking forward to it, if I recall, before this uh, season began. Well, before you know, last season began. But yeah. yeah, last season. Sorry, I keep forgetting it wasn't technically last season. It was two seasons ago. It was kind of when we first started this whole thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think we were both looking forward to it just on the basis that it was a, you know, it was a new sports battle series in the vein of, like, Yawamushi Pedal, Haikyuu, that sort of thing. You know, it was like, it was a new series. Uh using our the same tropes we all know and love uh and you doing a different sport i mean this was about rugby yeah like if we had literally the first rugby anime yeah exactly like if you google rugby anime it is the only thing that pops up outside of maybe clips from an episode of full metal panic yeah exactly <laughs> uh so yeah we were really excited for it um but it kind of turned it's like and as the series went along we weren't really feeling it too well uh, but it kind of managed to turn things around mm -hmm. yeah uh, so we we didn't think much of the the beginning of the show but ultimately it became one of the things we look forward to most every week yeah pretty much like it's kind of just before we keep going any further let me just sum up what happened here so series begins with a character by the name of Iwashimizu uh, he gets bumped by, or he bumps into a couple of, like, punk students at the beginning of the series, like, at the opening day for their high school of Jinko, and, uh, they're about to start some, start something up with him, uh, you know, is very shy, and right next to them happens to be another short, very short guy by the name of Gion, who's very, uh, very energetic, he, and, you know, he hates being picked on for being short, these guys mentioned, this is called, like, short stuff, Yon's about to actually start fighting him himself, and then Iwashimizu kind of takes him and runs away. Uh, and what they end up discovering is that they both have an interest in rugby, uh, because Gion ends up watching Jinko's rugby team play, and he wants to join the team. While Iwashimizu doesn't really care, uh, he has a whole history with it, and a lot of the series follows basically the entire team of Jinko uh, kind of growing together as a team, we find out a lot about what we, they, uh, about what the team means to them. They end up going to a training camp in the uh, Sugadaira, which is a city that's kind of built itself up as being kind of the rugby city in uh, in Japan. And they end up discovering that all of their hard work kind of pays off in the end because they've really started to become something of a force in rugby. Yeah, and it it is it is kind of a fun little journey they managed to get on but one of the things that made this show difficult and i think that s prevented a lot of people that would enjoy it from watching it was that the first five episodes really don't flow that well yeah like the first cup like the first two episodes i don't even think they're like terrible it does nothing to make itself stand out mm -hmm. uh there is some like, it's very standard, like, hey, I meet this guy on my first day of school, we're gonna go join the rugby team together, I'm gonna, uh, and this guy's gonna get over his problems with rugby. I, I don't know, it, it, it's not really that interesting. Uh, and then the second episode is all about Gion getting, you know, it, this is, it's running another beat that's pretty standard with sports series, it's the whole, like, ah, now Gion finds out what his special talent really is for the team for the game and you know there's just there's not really a lot of motivation we get there yeah uh, for... a lot of stuff just seems to happen it feels yeah. like here's a bunch of tropes that are interacting together and forcing each other into other tropes um so the whole the whole beginning uh the first several episodes is just the most basic tropiest uninteresting way to construct it um yeah. but it doesn't stay there and that's that's the thing that really got us was I believe it's episode six where they introduce their coach. Um, Guillaume manages to go out and recruit a rugby coach off the internet. Um, right. A guy named Coach Kamori. 
who ends up introducing them and sort of criticizing a lot of what they've been doing and undermining a lot of the like super strong confident statements that are so um i guess tropey that they've been making thus far um and he he makes them a more uh intelligent and uh, compelling product right. um and that that's where it starts to get interesting because you realize that when it was spending those first five episodes being the most basic generic show possible it was trying to do that as a setup to undermining yeah. undermining those same ideas that are so common in sports anime right but the problem is that it really did it too well because there was no real implication there during the beginning as part of the series where mm-hmm. you got to see it's like okay so this is clearly meant to be very tropey but you know it's like but it's going to be going in this direction no it's the most rote sport series possible until the coach joins the team it, well there are kind of two incidents the the one that we always talk about is the coach because that really was the turning point for the series yeah i i but the the kind of the quieter one that we don't really address too often or we haven't during our weekly episodes is actually when Gion when we find out Gion's motivation for joining the team Mm -hmm. Uh, which is a result of the coach joining the team because the coach ends up kicking Gion off of it. Uh, Like, he's basically like, you gotta get yourself together, man. Like, because he's had, because Gion is clearly like... He's got some personal baggage that he's bringing Right, he's he's clearly not doing, he's clearly not wanting to play rugby for the sake of playing rugby. He's clearly just trying to beat up older guys Mm -hmm. or people bigger than him. And he's like, okay, man, you gotta take a knee. Like, you are not fit for this team. And which really shakes... Gion, and that's when we find out more about his history because before they had kind of treated his whole situation with his brothers as just sort of like a gag because it's like oh yeah they tease him so he's jealous of being short and then we find out no his brothers really did kind of like scar Gion mentally over it like they really like picked Mm, on him they made him feel really um insufficient for his height right and I think and it, I, it was kind of that moment, I, at least for me personally, I think you were a little bit more on board with the series before, mm-hmm. like as soon as Coach Komori joined. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think that was really the moment where both of us started to go, like we started both investing ourselves in the series. Because then we finally had a motivation for Gion, you know, for our central character, which, you know, is kind of important for a series like this. Yeah, so it, it's it's interesting in that we talk about Gion as the main character because you know he is he is in the middle of all the promotional material and right. he is the one character that they keep coming back to, but there are vast stretches where it doesn't feel like the show has much interest in talking about Gion at all. Right, it, it has a very high Q feel where it it feels less about its central character. Uh, where they kind of have him as sort of like... It, it really only follows Gion almost as like an obligation to the genre. Mm-hmm. When in actuality, it's really more about the entire team. Well, yeah, it's, it's more... like every every time something significant happens with the overall plot, you sort of check in with Gion. He's one of the... Yeah. He's the character you always check in with. But if there's more time cumulatively spent on other characters. Yeah, exactly. And what we find out about Jinko is that even though it's not really this major rugby school, kind of everybody needs a place. And they all kind of found it on the rugby team. Uh, we have uh, Abumi, who really, what we find out about Abumi is that he really has like a crappy home life. And, you know, the rugby team kind of gives him an outlet for it. Uh, we have Issei, who has, like, kind of a, you know, he has kind of a crappy situation at home and pretty much has no future for himself otherwise. So, you know, he kind of needs the rugby team just to give him some happy, like, memories of high school. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's like, there's a whole bunch of different scenarios. Like, Sekizan kind of needs it because he needs a place where he can actually be, where he can actually have the opportunity to bring himself up. Like, he doesn't, you know, he didn't want to join the rugby team at first because, uh, you know, he was just being uh, bugged by the psycho kid named Hachi who wanted to, uh, uh, who just kept bugging him because, you know, he had a good body for rugby. Yeah, but, but ultimately, it, like, Sekizan was like, hey, I'm pretty naturally athletic. Um, rugby, it doesn't seem like the rugby team takes it seriously. But, right. you know, what got you know, to him is like, hey, this is a place where you can change the culture and you can you can make a team from scratch. It can be your team. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, you know, we find out that everybody has their own real, like, motivation for the team. 
And what I like about that, too, is that it goes more in-depth with each... Like, we, we kind of always get in a lot of sports series just the... Uh, kind of like we all kind of get the sense that they're all supposed to be a team and you know the reason why they like being a team is because of all this camaraderie this kind of goes that step further mm -hmm. well yeah it, it, it gets you enough background with each character where you see it's not that they want to be a part of the team it's that for whatever reason they need it um yeah it, it feels a little more deeply personal where most of these guys need the team in in a way that you don't often see. Um, a lot of times in sports anime, what we see is that every character, they want to be the best, or yeah. they want to work hard, or they want to go to Koshien. Here, right. that's sort of secondary. They want to be the best, but it's a lot. it feels a lot more personal. They want to be the best because they want to prove something to their family, or they've been hurt before, or they feel ashamed of themselves and this is an outlet where they're surrounded by people who make you know who give them a family that they might not otherwise have um right. and that's usually sports enemy doesn't take it to that degree um yeah but it does feel a little more human because right. one of the things that we talked a lot about when covering it week to week is that even though sekizan has insane cartoon hair <laughs> um, overall the way that these characters are portrayed feels a lot more like the way that actual high schoolers interact and communicate right. they kind yeah. of they kind of give each other crap all the time like you know they really get like kind of deeply personal with their insults and how they mess with one another exactly almost i i just there's this wonderful moment uh during one of their early games in the first season where ibumi knocks uh I, he's from totodai sagami i believe and he knocks him, like, clean off his feet. And he has this very intimate moment where he puts the helmet back on for him. And he's just like, it's there, got it back on for you, so I get to do it again. And it's like, oh, that's such good. That's so good. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just like, it's just so, cr it's like, it's so tender because it's so cruel. Well, yeah, uh, and, and more, more than that, I think it's just that they're not that mature. Yeah, um, exactly. Because a lot of times what these shows can do is they can give they can have these deep voiced main characters who are supposed to be 17 um, <laughs> and they're supposed to be infinitely mature and infinitely capable and they're supposed to be the best at everything. Uh, and luckily this team isn't like that. You know, they do have some deep voiced main characters, but they also have their own issues. They're not the best at their sport. They are not sure of all their motivations they're not really that smart they're not that good at tr they don't know everything about rugby they're not that strategically inclined they're not even a very good team overall right um but they're they're there for personal reasons and their motivations are mixed up and confusing and they don't totally understand what they're doing um which yeah, you know, uh, it I, feels a lot more authentic yeah like something i re that really sticks out to me uh, because there's this great moment where Kamori asks the like asks Sekizan, it's like, okay, so Sekizan, you're the captain here. What's your goal for the team? Mm. And Sekizan is like, well, I guess Hanazono. And it's like, I have never heard a proclamation of making the natural like to making the natu national tournament made so pass passively. Well, yeah, because one of it's, these it's, series, yeah, in every show that we see the captain has to be completely sure of himself and completely say we're going to nationals right know, it's like no that's my doubt. grand plan that's my great you know that's that's the goal and it's just like Sekizan doesn't know if he wants it. it's like he's kind of it almost feels like he's saying it just out of like i, I mean obligation. i guess that's yeah obligation it's like it's what we're supposed to be aiming for i mm -hmm. guess but i don't know what we're doing here like and you know the coach gives it them kind of all the guidance like okay you want to go to hanazono this is what you got to do, okay? Uh, and the team kind of struggles with, get, like, with getting involved with that. You know, everybody's kind of got to figure out their own reason for being there. And some people come to the conclusion that maybe I don't want to be here. Uh, there is this great uh, episode with the character with a character named Kata, who, uh, like, what we discover is he's like he can't handle the practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just uh, too physically exhausting. It's too demanding. He doesn't actually enjoy it as much. Yeah, it's it's almost it's like man, it's this is like rough on me. Like, and you know, maybe this isn't something I want to do because I want to actually have like 
I want to have a high school life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have other things to do, you know? Yeah, like, I want to have... It's like, I don't want to die. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I mean, a little extreme, but, I mean, he does talk about how he can't even, like, sleep or, like, d- keep down food because the practice is so hard on him, so... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, one other thing that's really nice about it, too, going, kind of going with the real, with the kind of the more, uh, realistic interpretation, one of the things I really love about this as well, we kind of touched on it briefly in the, uh, in our weekly reviews, was that uh, I like how they handle, uh, Sukadaira, which is their big training camp, because it's this city that's really just known for rugby. Mm-hmm. And what's really interesting about it is that they it feels very natural because, like, when we see the characters going around shopping for rugby supplies, they're not going to just a, uh, they're not going to, like, dedicated rugby schools like we, we see in a lot of other series. They're going to just, you know, random sports stores. Sugadaira is the pl- actually has, like, dedicated sports stores because it's a city that is known for having all of these, uh, you know, it's known for having this big training camp there. So there, you know, it makes sense for there to be for there to be sport uh, rugby stores there. Yeah. Uh, and you know, it, it just feels like it all feels very natural to the world that it's established. It's, you know, it's all in the details. Yeah. No, I agree. Um, because again, it focuses on realism. Uh, whereas in a show like Scorching Ping Pong Girls that we <laughs> also watched somehow. Um, <laughs> they have these gigantic dedicated ping pong stores, which don't feel that connected to reality. Yeah, um, because uh, who goes to dedicated, like, is that something that exists in Japan? I don't, it's like, there can't be a market for that. And I know mm-hmm. we're probably, like, the only ones who think of it in those sorts of terms. Uh, but, you know, I think it does build up. And I think it does, like, it, mm-hmm. it does something to actually add to the believability of what they're trying to get across here. Mm-hmm. It, it earns its credit for treating rugby as a like a minority and sport in japan and like recognizing hey this isn't the most popular thing not everybody cares about this it's just like some schools that put together a program our own school like nobody really cares about us you know they're not heroes that you know nobody's coming out to watch them um yeah that stuff you know it adds up and it's interesting (laughs) yeah definitely uh, I do want to touch upon something that's not as great. So it's really a shame that the first half got like the really good animation because there's some great like for all the faults we have kind of with early on. Mm-hmm. Uh, like there's some great animation to be found there with some like really hyper exaggerated like motions and like I just I remember these very clear images of like when characters get slammed, their bodies just completely distort and like like these giant gusts of air just blowing out of them at, due to the force of the impact of the hit. And I mean, on one hand it's kind of funny because uh, we're talking about how we love the realism of it. And maybe that anime maybe that first half with that type of animation kind of goes against that. But man, that was pretty to look at. And then the second half, uh, it's clear they started losing some of their budget. Yeah, it's off and on, you know. Yeah, because uh, there are some mo- there are some moments that do get kind of rough in there with uh, with some <sighs> clearly just they're using still shots and like ca- moving the camera around. Mm-hmm. Uh, and but it's like man, that, it's like man, it's really a shame because this they clearly thought this was gonna be a bigger hit than it was. Yeah, we'll get into that when when we finish. Um, the last the last thing I just wanted to bring up is one of the ongoing themes we've seen between shows is the. I guess it a lot of these shows question exactly how you should be playing sports and why you're playing sports and how seriously you should take it. Um, and, you know, where this sport, you know, how important it is in society, how you should act within it in terms of your personal health and in terms of your prioritizing it within the other places in your life. Um, I'm sort of talking around it, but basically the conflict is some shows advocate that high school students should train through the pain And that they should, you know, if they are hurting themselves in pursuit of their goal, that means that they're doing it right. And they praise that that as a good work ethic. 
um, other shows will say, you know, hey, if you're injuring yourself, it means you're doing something wrong and you're not making yourself able to be more successful in the future. And also, it's only high school, um, especially if you're playing a practice game, you should nev- not put yourself in the situation. You don't need to put yourself in a position to risk your future over a practice game. Um, and so that's sort of an ongoing dialogue between different shows. And one of the things I liked about this show is that the Coach Kamori, he sort of gives them perspective. Because um, the before he comes along, the students end up hurting themselves a lot in practice. And their, practi- their practices aren't actually that constructive. Even though they work out a lot, they're not really learning the techniques that well. And they're right. not really becoming that much better of a team. They're just working hard and effectively like running into a brick wall really fast. Um, and he comes in and he says, okay, one, we're going to stop hurting ourselves. And two, <laughs> you know, we're going to, we're going to learn techniques. And three, uh, whenever we do these practice games, uh, because none of them count, uh, we're, we're only going to go to these practice games. Our goal isn't going to be to win or lose. Our goal is going to be to learn. So we're going to switch people right. out. We're not going to go out there to win. We're, if we win great, but ultimately our goal is to learn techniques. Um, and so I appreciated that because a lot of other shows will just say that every game matters and you have to put it all on the line every time, which just isn't, it's not realistic. And it sets a bad standard for kids who watch these shows to right. say that like, oh, if I'm hurting myself, that means I'm training well. Right. No, this is actually a series that's trying to have like a good message there. Like, hey guys, that's not how actual training works. Yeah, that's like, not how actual athletes do it. It's, it's like, hey, you know what? Like, it, it's kind of an issue with kind of a lot of society where we have this mentality of like the more you do it the better it's, you're gonna get at it and it's like that's not generally the case mm-hmm. like you need time to rest you need time to reflect you need time you you need to be able to get some perspective there you need to make sure you're not dying by doing it like this exactly. is not uh and it's like it's not just a good message for just like how you interact with the sport it's a good message just for how you should be living life well yeah it's like you know it applies to work-life balance um it applies to a lot of things just in how what 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 are your priorities you know and the show asks that a lot um and it uses the the coach to come in and ask that of the students um so i appreciate it just in terms of who its audience is of saying like hey you know high school kids there are there's more out there you know don't don't believe the lie that this is the only thing that matters it's not right. um and also that it says you know the thing that you're the the biggest thing you're going to get out of sports or anything you're doing is having a community and having friends and having family like you don't need to be the best in japan you can just um work hard with your friends and get better and that's deal you know that again it's not that complex a theme, but because there's so many shows that refuse to acknowledge that as a possible yeah. as a possibly valid motivation, we need shows like this. <laughs> yeah, kind of. It's like it feels like it's a message that shouldn't have needed to be said, but all it does, kind of clearly. Yeah, it yeah. clearly does. Like, why is it's like why is there no no other voice in the room like actually saying this? Yeah, and I so mean I, there there are there are some. It's just like it's it's a mix between other shows, but I think all right. out all out manages to hit more of that more effectively than most shows. Even yeah, so, even some great ones like um, like Haikyuu doesn't really validate experiences outside the volleyball club, um, right. or like Ace of the Diamond, even though it has a great message on training intelligently and not hurting yourself. It doesn't have a great message on anything mattering but baseball. You know? <laughs> yeah, and that's one of the greats of the genre too. Like, I mean, nothing wrong with that. We're not trying to say mm-hmm. like yeah. all out invalidates all of these other great shows, but it does try and help us provide some perspective on how you should maybe be living. Like, you know, it's okay to have a well balanced life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was fun. Um, I guess we're where we should end is talking about its future right and that's a little sadder (laughs) well yeah i mean it's just it's not like we know there won't be a second season right but what we do know is that it did not gain any kind of popular momentum in japan or in the united states yeah it really didn't find a market 
Yeah, it, it's so weird because it had the really, really unfortunate problem of pre- premiering alongside Yuri on Ice yeah. and the third season of Haikyuu. Uh, and those were, you know, those were the big ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, if and... you're going to watch a sports anime, why would you watch the new one with no reputation and no like big drama and excitement tied to it with less good animation yeah basically and i mean and also we kind of touched onto this as well it doesn't help the fact that the first episodes did not really do it any favors Mm -hmm. yeah i I mean that's the thing like the first episode on yuri of yuri on ice is incredible it's an incredibly well animated well told story and it took all out six episodes which is a month and a half to get to the point yeah. where we could get on board who who but people that watch it out of obligation for a podcast are gonna watch something <laughs> for a month and a half just to see if it works out yeah basically and it's like because most people have dropped it at that point most people would have dropped it by episode three yeah i would have dropped it by episode three if i wasn't doing this yeah exactly uh, and <sighs> And that's kind of the problem. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we can we can hope. I know there's there's more material out there. It's possible that someone will take a chance on it. Right. Um, so hopefully, you know, in the next you know couple of years, we do see another season. I'd love to right. see it. But yeah, I I really need. I may end up having to just read the manga of this afterwards because I mean I I don't know if I can just deal with the notion that I'm not going to be able to hear the end of the story. No, I agree. Um, overall. So, who would you recommend it to? Oh, um... I think I would limit this to people who have seen a traditional sports anime before and enjoy it. Um, Okay. I I don't know if I would recommend this to people who don't already enjoy sports anime. Yeah. A lot of where it succeeds is by playing with the tropes of the genre. So, if you have no interest in the tropes of the genre... It may not stick for you, and uh, it's not, you know, some sports anime, like like Free or something, it has an appeal outside the genre because uh, it's more about the character stories, and while there's a lot of character stories in All Out, they pretty much center exclusively on, on rugby, and they're rugby, yeah. they're rugby stories, you know, they're a <laughs> character story of rugby more than anything, um, yeah. so I don't think it holds as much water outside of people who are already into the genre and i that's you pretty much took exactly what i was gonna say i don't know if this is a series that if if you're not already watching sports anime first of all why are you watching listening to this podcast uh second (laughs) are you related to me that's probably why (laughs) (laughs) are you like the couple of people who have actually commented on our uh youtube episodes or uh or on our uh reviewed our itunes like yeah like you're if if you're not already into sports anime, you're not going to get anything out of this, I don't think. You might get something, but eh, I don't think so. If you are into sports anime, though, definitely check it out. Like, at the very least, don't you don't have to re-watch Haikyuu or Ace of the Diamond, okay? Like, g- give it a shot, mm-hmm. is what we're just saying here. Give it a shot. Maybe take, if you got an afternoon free, wa- power through those first few episodes and get right to the meat of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate, but I, I I can't lie to myself. It does not really have crossover appeal. It's weird that we have an uh, we have a sports battle anime series that's made almost exclusively for sports anime battle fans, like <laughs> for critics of the genre. But that's what All Out is. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. Um, it's not expected. I I honestly expected a lot more focus on boys' butts. Yeah, um, like that's what the opening suggests. It does suggest a lot of boys' butts, but despite those short shorts, they really don't fixate on boys' butts or their close, questionable relationships or any of it. Yeah, um, which much. is you know fine, um, but uh, it didn't help it sell. Yeah, no, it it's so weird how that turned out. Yeah. But anyway, uh, I th- I think that's uh, I think that's a good place to end on. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, thanks as always for joining me, Matt. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Okay, cool beans. Well, would you go all out and hit those credits? <laughs> all right, here I go. Our logo design is by James Ratcliffe. The theme music is Fly High by Burnout Syndromes, covered and performed by Luke Bartka. 
You can follow Koshiancast on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter, and our email is koshiancast at gmail.com. Make sure to subscribe, rate, and review. We will be back next week with the best and worst from the world of sports anime, and until then, keep training.